Hello all, Jackson Marino here coming to you from my desk. It's been a while since we've done a sit down video, hasn't it? Yeah, eight months. It's a pretty long time, not gonna lie. Another little note, if you do hear noises like cars and beeps in the background, it's because there is construction happening right outside my window. And such as that. And it just stopped. It's like the beep, beep, beep. You might hear that a few times throughout the video, things like that. If you hear something coming down the road, it's it's construction vehicles coming down and back because they are doing construction right outside my window, and I apologize for that, but there's not really anything I can do about it, so we're just going to have to put up with it for this video. Now, just strap in. Let's get to it already. So the first story I wanted to tell you about today is the Great Grade A Biff. You're going to like this one, I can already tell. So at Thousand Islands, me, my dad, our friend Cassandra, and a few other people spent vacation there. For a few days. Well, like a, a little over a week. I meant <laughs> a little over a week. And on the second day, my dad rented bicycles. Now, a few years prior to this, my dad tried to teach me how first. And I wasn't really comfortable with it. But now I'm pretty comfortable because, you know, I just rode bikes down there and I got pretty comfortable with it. Comfortable with it. You know how it felt. And, uh, Yeah. It's, um, you feel free on a bike. You feel free when you coast down a hill. Um, anyway, when my dad was kind of getting me attuned to the bike, he had me ride down this hill. And there are these gravelly patches down the hill where if you apply the brakes on them, you'd just not stop. You'd slide over them. Sounds, um, doesn't sound too bad, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyway, um, my dad's like, all right, Jack, take the lead. All right, Dad. So I ride down the hill. I'm like, okay, we're getting speed. Let's apply the brakes. And I just so happened to do that right above the gravel. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's not really, like, irking me or anything. I'm just doing that for dramatic effect. But anyway, so I'm like, oh, why am I not stopping? And at th I'm gaining speed, and I'm like, at, th at this point, I know I'm going to crash. Like, it's inevitable. So I'm, and I'm like, okay. My dad told me. If you're going to crash anywhere, crash on the grass. So I have the wits to just barely, without toppling over and crashing on the cement, I managed to just pull over on the grass. Well, not pull over, but I just managed to get on the grass before I crash. And at this point, I know I got to stop somehow. And the only way I'm going to stop is if I crash. Because if I didn't stop, I was going to go in someone's campsite and crash into there. And if, I, and if that didn't stop me, I would have gone right over a ledge, which leads to the St. Lawrence River. Either I would have landed on the shore and might probably would have broken something in my body, like a like my shoulder or something. Um, or I would have just tumbled on the rocks and just landed in the water. Neither of which I wanted, so I just decided to just take the easy route, topple over to my left, and crash. My dad tells me that I should have seen it from the back, and... What's really frustrating is that he should have said I seen it, I should have seen it from the back, and since I was the person who crashed, I will never see it from the back. <laughs> it's mildly infuriating, but maybe one day when I'm teaching my kids to ride bicycles, maybe I'll see that. So, yeah, that was, um, looking back, it was pretty, um, cool, my first real crash on a bike. <laughs> um... The next minute or so consisted of me screaming at the sky, re uh, like re-catching my breath, and just shaking off the pain. I didn't quite get up and deal with it immediately, but after about two minutes or so, I was I was able to, I was good to go, and I rode the rest of the way back up the hill. And yeah, that was um that was a pretty fun experience looking back. My first bicycle crash. Because, um, yeah, I, I had a late start because when I was, like, 10 years old, um, I guess we just didn't, we didn't think to really, like, teach me, like, how to do it earlier, like, when I was five or so. That's probably when I should have learned. But I, I learned, like, seven years late, and I guess that's the, I guess that's the, that's, um, not really a consequence, but, you know, I started a little late. <laughs> um, next story. Uh, this actually happened just last Sunday, so that's, that's pretty cool we're sharing a recent story now three things to clear up maybe two three things i'm not sure all right number one if you don't know what a, what a guitar amplifier is 
it's something for music concerts where you plug it into your guitar, you connect it to your guitar, and when you play your guitar or bass or whatever instrument you have, in this case it's a bass guitar, if you when you um play that instrument, it the sound goes through the amplifier and it plays it out to the crowd. It's really good for concerts and such. Number two. I don't know if you're familiar with a band called Crooked Knuckles, but I know I am. My dad plays in that band. He's the lead guitarist. He he plays amazing, as do all the as do the other three members. Now, the member the band member I'm going to be focusing on today is a fella named Carter. Now Carter played the bass guitar. And um he um lit his amp on fire. I know, it sounds weird. Trust me, I'm just going to tell you how it happened. So he was playing normally. He was playing it real hard. Like, he was just, he was really going at it. He was, like, his fingers were flying across those frets. And and, and I smell, I think, wait a second, I, I, do I smell smoke? Later, I found out that Carter had literally lit his amplifier on fire playing. <laughs> it started, like, it, it started smoking. And... And, and Carter looks over and he's like, oh crap, oh shoot. <laughs> so either, I can't remember what happened afterwards. I Either he went through the whole show without an amp or he got a spare amp and played with that. Either way, they finished the show. The music was great. Yay. That's about all I have for today. Hope you enjoyed those stories as much as I did telling you. And as always, strength and honor.